following message is a presentation of Valley Metro Church, a community of believers dedicated to knowing God and making Him known. This morning, I have the privilege of talking to you about the will of God. And last week, we started looking at the will of God. And the cool thing about God's will is not only does He have a will, And not only does he have a will very specifically for you, but God's will can actually be known. It can be known. We can actually know the will of God. We can not only know it, we can test God's will. When things come up in our life, we can test it and go, yes, that is. No, that's not. Yes, that is. There are ways. God gave us tools that we can test whether things are his will or not. To me, I don't know if this does anything for you, but this is explosive because the invisible creator of planet Earth and the universe, God Almighty, who breathed life into you as a child, in scripture says that he had, or, he had days ordained for you before even one of them came to be. That's cool. And that he created you for great things that he wants to do, good works in Christ Jesus, things that he established before you were even born. God has a will. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, not to harm you, but to prosper you, give you a hope and a future. God's got definition, plans, clarity for you and I. The thing is, are we getting in on it? And when we looked briefly last week at Romans chapter 12, as we're going through Romans, the first couple of verses said something really explosive about God's will. Not only is his will personal and we can know it, it said a few things. And what it said, just to recap last week really briefly, it said that, um, that you and I can test and approve, test and approve what God's will is. And it started us, you know, really thinking about, wow, what are the ways we test and approve God's will? Because this is important, guys. And if you're a note taker, you might want to take some notes today. Or if your spouse is uh, sharper than you, let them take the notes. Because uh, you know, this is going to be some good stuff. There's gonna, stuff that's going to come up in your life. And you're going to be at a crossroads. And you're going to be at decision points all the time. We have decisions and decisions are going to be an ongoing reality in life. And these decisions are crossroads and they're going to determine our direction. And for us to just wing it or guess is not the the way to go in the kingdom of God. You and I have to go, God, what is your will? Because I want to be right smack in the middle of your will. How many of you guys want to be in the middle of God's will? Amen. Because here's the thing, if the truth were told, when it comes to God's will, if God's will, if you can look at it like a river, a river, a flowing river of the will of God, there are some that would rather maybe sit on the side and put their feet in it a little bit and go, no, I'm in God's will. But they're really on the bank because they, they're kind of controlling where they're going to, they're not really sure if they can trust God all the way. Others maybe get in a little bit, but they don't get far from the side. They're kind of in the river, but they're kind of holding on to the side. I want to encourage you, in the middle of God's river, in the middle of God's river of grace is where the abundant life is. That is the zone. That is the zone where the Spirit of God is moving powerfully, where God's given clarity, where there's power, where there's love. It's right in the middle of God's river of grace. It's in the middle of His will. And my prayer this morning is that all of us, before we look at how to test and approve it, that we would really desire, saying, I don't want to sort of be in his will. I don't want to like get away with everything I could and maybe once in a while check it. No, I want to be right smack in the middle of God's will. I want to be in that zone where God is moving in my life and God's doing radical things and I know what I know what I know and God has me going this way. That's a beautiful way to go through life, knowing your direction, knowing that God is steering you and guiding you and leading you into the purpose and things that he's called you to. That's right in the middle of God's will. And my prayer before we cover anything is that you too would have that heart desire saying, yes, and none of us are perfect, but God, I want to be in that zone. I want to be in the middle of your will because that's where life begins. That's the abundant life. On the side of the river, dipping your toes in the water is not the abundant life that Jesus called us to. It's not life in the spirit. It's not a life of fruition. It's not... You know, it's a compromised life. It's a, that, that's a life holding on and clinging to the world and trying to taste the kingdom at the same time when God's saying, come to me. 
Come to me, all of you, if you're weary and heavy laden. Come to me. It's the place where rivers of living water will flow out of you, as Jesus said. It's in that river of grace, in the center of God's will. So let's look at some of these ways that we can, we can test it, that we can approve and test and know what God's will are. A, a quick uh, recap. How many of you were uh, here last week? Okay, how many not? Okay, quick recap on just a few things that Romans 12 covered. I want to hit these really quick because these are ways that we test and approve God's will. And last week we looked at three really quickly. The first one, it says, it said, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be renewed with the transforming, with the renewing of your mind. And, and also let your body be a living sacrifice so that you can test and approve what God's will is. The summary of last week is, don't compare yourself to the world and the patterns around you. You cannot know God's will. You will never discern it if we're looking over here. Well, look at the Joneses over here and look at the Smiths over here and look what everyone else is doing over here. There, that's no way to test and approve what the will of God is. And that's what the Bible says. Be transformed. Don't be conformed to those patterns. If you and I, and you and I are immersed in the patterns of the world, the patterns of the world are all around us. But the Bible's saying, if we're looking at those, we're never going to get God's will. Don't be c- confused by the patterns around in the world, okay? So the first way from last week is don't compare yourself to worldly patterns. The next one was through a mind that's renewed in God's word. In other words, when we're watching TV all day and billboards and advertisements and everything else, we get carried off in a drift of, of, of mediocrity. But we're in, when we're in his word, in the word of God, our mind gets renewed and already we're in a way better zone to say, yes, no, yes, this is God's will. No, it's not. There's clarity in that. And the third one we covered last week was by letting your body be a living sacrifice to God. (laughs) Literally, live pure, live right, live set apart. The term is holiness in the Bible or live sanctified, but the reality is this. God blesses our purity with his clarity. If you and I choose to live pure, no one can do this for you. If you choose to live set apart, if you let your body be a living sacrifice to God, your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit, and if you and I are willing to live pure, God's going to bless us with his clarity. That's what he says. That's how we test and approve and know what God's will is. That's radical, creator of the universe, who designed you with a plan, who seems invisible in a lot of ways, but makes himself known in many other ways. And you and I can test and approve, yep, God's will, not God's will. This is God's will. This is really cool. And since this is such a cool topic and I think a a really important one, and since you and I have so many decisions that come up in life, um, there are more tests. There are more tests to approve and check God's will. And I wanted to share some more with you this morning. And there's seven of them. I'm going to fly through. It's going to be like a flyby or a drive-by in LA. Isn't that what we call it? Uh, Be like a drive-by. I'm going to cover these quickly, but please track with me on this because if you you really take these steps to the Lord, you are going to be able to test and approve the will of God in your life. You will. You'll be able to test and approve and know God's will. These are radical. These are biblical. They're going to show you the living God wants to give clarity in some of these areas. Um, the first one is this. The first one is, uh, for this morning is, is the motivation test. The motivation test. When you're trying to discern something, God, is this you? God, is this not you? Before you even do anything, is check motivations. And why I say that? Because the Bible tells us to check our motives. But the reality is sometimes we don't even come to terms with our own motives. I mean, sometimes we don't even really know it's a motive. We just... We want to th- go this way or we don't want to go that way and uh, maybe we want this or we don't want that, but we haven't even really checked our motives. It's kind of a, 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 an internal hardwired stirring that's going on and there's a, there's a battle of the human soul and, and the spirit of God. Um, the spirit of God trying to lead us one way, but our mind, will, and emotions trying to take us another way. And there's an ongoing thing going on with the nature of God's spirit who lives in every believer and the soul of, of humanity, which is body, which is mind, will, and emotions, trying to pull us in another way. And there is a war between what the Bible would call the, the carnal or the soulish nature of people 
and the Spirit of God leading them. There, there is a tug of war going on. And sometimes when we're asking for things or seeking direction, we don't even come to terms with that internal conflict. And there's a motivation. Check yourself. Is my motive right? Uh, is, is my motive right? Is, it, is my ambition here for what I'm seeking or deciding or, or what path I'm going to take, is it selfish ambition or godly ambition? And I really think you've got to start there because Philippians 2, 3, and you have some of these in your bulletin, it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Sometimes we're at a crossroads and we're like, I want that. And we didn't ask why we want that. We didn't check why we want that. And I think we got to check on the inside, even before we're checking with God. Uh, because sometimes we kind of skip the motivations. We kind of skip that and I just want it, God. I want it, I want it, I want it. And we pray for things without checking the internal motives. So the motivation test is an important one. Um, there are matters of the spirit and matters of the soul. And here's the thing. The matters of the soul the mind, will, and emotions, and the matters of the spirit, since they're different, they need to be divided. We need to separate them to look at them properly. And I'll be honest with you, except for the word of God, there's really no other tool that you and I have to separate matters and issues of the soul and the spirit. The the word of God, like a precision laser, slices between matters of soul and matters of spirit. Uh, Check this out, Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit. You guys get that? The word of God can cut between matters of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow. If you've ever taken a piece of chicken apart and you see the joint and the marrow, kind of hard to separate those, even with a good kitchen knife. But the word of God like a laser, can separate between matters of the soul and issues of the spirit, just like between uh, joints and marrow. And listen to this. And it's able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. You and I, sometimes we don't know our motive. We're doing something or making a decision. We really haven't backed up and checked our motive. But the word of God will divide between matters of the soul and matters of the spirit And the word of God will separate issues of motive. God will reveal things. He'll lay things wide open. It's beautiful. So that's a motivation test. And that's an important one, which leads us to the second one, which is the the word test, the word, the word as in the word of God. See, he's given us everything we need for life and godliness. And there are some principles in his word. There are some um, snapshots that God has already laid down. There are historical things in the Bible, in God's word, that he blesses. This book is full of things regarding the blessability of God. Things that are blessable and things that are simply not. And so when you and I are going down a road and we're trying to d- decide, God, is this your will? Is that your will? What about this choice? Is it second best? Is this the best choice? This has already got precedent. There is already an established precedent. There are already stories in here of God watching people and God saying, that is good and it's blessable. And if you and I follow just the precedent, does that make sense? That what's already established, there are areas of blessability. There are some, that, so I would ask yourself, when you're at a crossroads or you're about to make the choice to say, does the word of God already say something specific about this? It may very well, it usually does, say something specific about the very matter that you're deciding on. So the word test, when you're deciding things and you're discerning the will of God, whatever the issue, the matter is, to bring it before God and say, does the word already say something? So number one, I'm going to check the motive of my heart. Maybe there's some selfish ambition or maybe it's a godly ambition. That's good. Number two, I'm going to go to the word and I'm going to see, does God already set a a precedent for this of blessability or not being blessable? Uh, the Bible says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. And as you and I are walking down this road with God and we're trying to decide our direction, whether we're going to go left or going right, he's like, my word is like a spotlight already. And rather than just kind of wonder what to do and make a random choice, look at my word. It's going to light your path. It's going to be like a floodlight right where your feet step. 
and we won't trip up along the way because there's already some established precedent in here. So ask yourself, does the Bible say something about it? Is it already blessable by God, this kind of thing that I'm putting before God, the question? And, and did God already establish a precedent about it? Those are really big ones. Those are important. Um, the other one is this. It's the, the third one is it's the test of prayer. The test of prayer. So maybe you check your heart and your motivation is right. You're like, I think this is a godly ambition. I really do. I don't, I don't think there's any selfish thing about this choice and decision I'm trying to make, God, about being in your will. And so I think it passes that test. And in your word, it seems to, uh, it seems to be something that you bless. You're not speaking contrary to it. So I think it passes the word test. And the next one is the test of prayer. Are we really, have we really committed it to the Lord in prayer? Because when you look in the New Testament, they already had a sense of overall direction, and yet they would commit things to the Lord in prayer. And I want to be careful when we talk about committing to the Lord in prayer, because you've probably said this, I know I've said this before, and people say, well, I've already prayed about that, right? How many have heard that, right? I've already, I'm done, I've already prayed about that, right? And they said, well, there was an issue of decision, and I had to make a choice, and yeah, I already prayed about that. Okay, so I'm moving on. That's not passing the prayer test. That's not like I already prayed about it. I already rifled up a prayer and God didn't answer, so here I go. That's not the prayer test. The prayer test is committing something to the Lord in prayer, seeking him and waiting on the Lord. And let me tell you something, the big decisions in your life, you have to do that. You have to commit things to the Lord in prayer, the big decisions, because the outcome of those two different roads are going to go two completely different ways. It could be God's best or maybe something God's not calling you to at all, and you're prolonging a lot of things in your life, and I would as well, if we don't get on the path of God's best. So in this decision thing, committing it to the Lord in prayer, really seeking Him. The Word says, if you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. That's a promise by God. I love that. He also says in 1 John 5, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. We're talking about the will of God and going down this road in prayer and getting in on God's disclosure, God's revelation of direction and paths because, family, we want to be in the middle of that river. We want to be in the middle of God's river of his will. We don't want to be kicking it on the side, dipping our toe in the water. And Yeah, it was a little cold today. No, we want to be right smack in the middle of God's river. That's what he made you for. That's what he made me for. That's the area of God's will. That's where the abundant life is. And these are tests to say, where am I with your calling and your design and the future you have? What did you predestine me for, God? Because I want to be right smack in the middle of it. Uh, So that's an important one. Um, The fourth one is this, the, the test of godly wisdom. Godly wisdom. You know, some things in our life require supernatural revelation. God, I really need to hear from you. I mean, literally, I got to hear from heaven on this. You got to show me. There's got to be some way. You, I, 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 need, I need your revelation, God. It's, it's a big thing, and I really need your revelation. There are other things that don't require supernatural revelation, but they do require godly wisdom. They're, they're, they're wise choices that God would say, this is a good way. And, and, and that's an important one, and the Bible talks about that. Um, The Bible says in Proverbs, wise is the counsel of many. And so another test in discerning the will of God is to check in with wise counsel. Who do you see in your life and around you that you admire? They seem to be walking in some godly wisdom. Because if God has those people in your life, and I um, I trust he does, you need to ask them and consult them, especially on your big decisions. That's the way God designed it. He didn't design the kingdom that we're codependent with each other, no. No but we are supposed to be interdependent with one another. And this is the way the body of Christ works. We're going to talk next week and in weeks to come specifically about your gift and your calling and what God's doing in the area of gifts. But I will say part of God's design among us is some have a word of wisdom and some have some godly wisdom where there's some really good gift of discernment to kind of go, yeah, that doesn't sound like the Lord, or yes, that sounds totally blessable. And I would agree that that's what God, if that's what you're struggling with or praying about, that seems to be the Lord. Uh, There are people in your life that have that gift. 
of discernment, of godly wisdom. And, and the, the, that fourth point is the test of godly wisdom. Seek them out. I know I do. I, I, I come up with things all the time that I'm like, hmm, praying about it, checking the word, looking for precedent, trying to check motive, ambition, but going, I think both of them would work, but I want the high road, Lord. I want the better one, and I, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. And I've checked with godly wisdom in my life. Other pastors, other men of God around me that I love. Uh, Also, by the way, your spouse, if you're married, is an amazing source of godly wisdom because your spouse has a vantage point that nobody else has. Your spouse has a vantage point that nobody else has. Your spouse knows you better than anybody else. And if your spouse loves the Lord, that's another phenomenal source of checking in. Hmm, what do you think about this? That's a great place to start. Um, but that's important. Wise, uh, wise counsel in regard to spiritual matters. Think of who those people are in your life. Identify them and don't be afraid to ask. You might say, well, that's kind of humbling. Yeah, it's good. God designs it that way. It's a good thing. Um, James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask of God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. In other words, God knows we need wisdom in areas. Ask him for wisdom, pray for wisdom, Use godly counsel. This is an enormous, necessary step in discerning the will of God and testing it in your life. The fifth one, this is big. The fifth one is the peace of God test. The peace of God test. This is the test of God's peace. Here's the deal. If you and I are in... God's river of grace. If you and I are right smack in the middle of his will, if we are, we will be bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. God is saying, I'm all over this, right? Peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And if we're in the will of God, we will be in the peace of God. If we're outside the will of God, you can't manufacture peace. Peace is a fruit. It's a fruit of the Spirit through people. We don't, we don't manufacture fruit. We only distribute fruit. Amen? Peace is something that God can do. It's a peace on the inside. And if you're in God's will, you will have God's peace. And that's a big one because as you're at a crossroads and you're, you're trying to make a decision and you're checking your motive and you, you know, you're checking biblical precedent, did God already say this is blessable? And you're, you, you're taking it before the Lord in prayer and you're seeking godly counsel and you're still trying to decide what this, what this is and um, that this peace of God is a big one because I can't tell you there, how many times I've done this before where I've, I've committed things to prayer and I've sought God and finally, finally, and God has spoken to me before and I've heard his voice and he's given me uh, some revelation that way, but sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he's silent. And you know what he says? He's saying, be still and know that I am God. And that's okay if God wants to be silent. But here's the beauty. God can meet you in the silence and give you a peace that passes understanding. And that's even better than hearing a word because the peace of God is radical and we can't create it and we can't manufacture it. But if God wants to drop some peace in your life like that and and give you some peace, it's like, whew, thank you, God. I've gone up on the mountain before seeking God on on the big things. I need to go out of my way. I need to get away. On big questions, I trust you do the same. When it's a big question, you better break your routine and the normal things. You better go to the beach or go to, you better get away, go to the park, wherever you need to be, and you better get alone with God on the big decisions. And it's in those times. Sometimes he does speak, but sometimes he's given me peace. And let me tell you something. The peace is the answer. The peace is the answer. When God, when you're seeking him and you're, you've already checked these tests, it's a biblical precedent. He already blesses this in general. I don't know if it's for me, um, there's no bad motive in it and uh, I've been praying about it and godly wisdom seems to think this is a good general direction but I don't know if it's for me right now and then God gives you this peace about it. That's beautiful. It's beautiful when God gives you peace. Peace can be the answer. If you're in God's will, you'll have peace about the choice and direction. Love this scripture. You might want to underline it in your Bible. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, including your choices and directions, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, listen to this, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Here's the radical thing. This is God's way of meeting you with his peace. 
that your, your prayers and petitions and requests are being made known to God. You're like, God, I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand what your will is, God. I love you. I want to be in the middle of your, your, your river of grace. I want to be in the middle of your will. I don't know. I'm going to put my prayers and petitions and requests to you, God. And, and God's, this pastor is just saying, God will meet you with his peace. And that peace, listen to this, it transcends your understanding. So there's a lot of ways that your brain is going to go, well, how's that going to happen? <laughs> Try figuring that one out. You know, how's, you know, what about this? And what about all these other problems and worries? And, and the brain's going to come up with a bunch of arguments. Why? Because that's the mind, will, and emotions. Remember we said earlier, the matters of the spirit are separate from the matters of the soul. The mind, will, and emotions sometimes have a war with what the spirit of God's trying to do in your life. This is saying the peace of God transcends understanding. It's above it. It's beyond it. The peace of God will lead you by his spirit through the fruit of peace that is beyond normal uh, what you can figure out or a code that you can crack. It's beyond human understanding. It passes. It surpasses, some translations say, the peace of God that surpasses understanding. And this case is saying it transcends all understanding. That's going to guard your heart and guard your mind. So if arguments come up contrary, and sometimes the devil is lying and shooting those darts of doubt and confusion, you're going to be like, uh, 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 uh. I am walking in the peace of God which transcends understanding. God has already led me. He's given me an answer by his peace, and I'm walking in it. And that's a beautiful thing, and and that's an important one. Um, I'm going to do these last couple. In fact, if the worship team could come up, that would be fantastic. The sixth one is this, guys. It's the faith test, the test of faith. The test of faith is a test that when you're at this crossroads and you're trying to decide left or right, is this best or not best, God? The test of faith says, is this decision going to require more faith or less faith? Because usually the way God leads you is in the ones that require more faith. You see, this relationship with with Jesus, it began by faith. That's how we come to him, by faith. And the whole journey is by faith. And it never stops being by faith. And so when God is leading you and I to the center of his will, faith is a big, it's a big component. The will of God and faith go hand in hand. Matters of God's will are going to require faith. And that's why you want to check on the faith test. You want to ask, is fear which is the opposite of faith, is fear influencing my decision at all? You've got two crossroads to take, different paths, different directions. You will have greater fear about one, and that fear is not from the Lord. God doesn't give you a spirit of fear or timidity, but power, love, and a sound mind. So it's important to say, yeah, I'm a little, bit of, I'm a little scared about that one. Ha- walk in the faith test. Walk in the one that's going to require more faith. Without, po- without faith, it's impossible to please God. And the biggest decisions in my life, the two biggest decisions in my life, the first one was with Christ. And that that was one I had to take a step of faith. If I was going to give my life to Christ, not just accept the Savior, but the Bible says give give your life, surrender to his lordship. I'm like, whoo, here goes. It's all by faith. The second biggest decision in my life was not Christ, but Christy. Yeah. And that's by faith. And I prayed for a sign. I prayed for this revelation. I, pray, I did all those things. Been on a hill with God, fasting and praying. Show me, give me a sign. Give me, you know. And for me, I've had friends that got signs, got clarity about that, and their spouse, their soulmate, their rib. Um, but for me, I wasn't getting that. And I just sensed God saying, son, you walk in faith. Without an answer of yes, she's your bride or not, just walk in faith. And I'm like, man, this is a, a big one. Can I just tell you, after I proposed to Christy, God gave me truckloads of confirmation, boatloads of confirmation. God needed to stretch my faith. And I love her more today than the day I walked down the aisle with her because you can trust God. When you walk in the will of God, you don't have to worry about being in the middle of his river. He sustains you. He blesses you. That's where you want to be. So the faith test is a big one. Matters of God's will, who you're friends are, who you're marrying, who, things like this, decision, career, calling, they're big. The faith test is an important, important part. And the last one is this. 
It's the test, and we're going to talk more about this next week, the test of examining your gifts. Examining your gifts. Because when you're just trying to decide direction and discernment, there's things that God put in you, and he, ex- he wants them to come out of you. He put them in you for a reason. He put them in me. His gifts and his calling, the Bible says, are irrevocable. So he doesn't just give you a gift and a talent and a resource out of happenstance. He gives you a gift and a talent and a resource by his sovereign design. He knew what he was doing when he created you. Before the foundations of the world, he orchestrated things for you and I. And when he made you, he was giving out gifts, spiritual gifts and natural gifts. He was giving you these endowments of his grace. And they have a big factor in the big picture. And so you can't skip that. If you're at two roads right here and one has nothing to do with your gifts and talents and calling, but the other one does, you really got to look at the tests of examining these gifts. And um, on that note, we're going to wrap up in prayer. I want to say these last three things, though, on, on cautions, if you will. Cautions about discerning the will of God. The first caution is this. These are little extras, but believe me, they come up all the time. Beware of, beware of your feelings. Beware of your feelings. Your feelings are not the voice of God. And so many people say, well, but I feel this way. I, wanna, I, I think I need to do this because I feel this way. Your feelings and my feelings are not the voice of God. They're not the voice of truth. We said the soulish nature, the mind, will, and emotions, and the spirit of God are in con- constant conflict of, of, of trying to, who's going to be an authority in our life. And if we let the spirit of God lead us, that's the zone. So feelings, beware of feelings. Don't make a choice because I kind of feel like a... Check your feelings. Really check your feelings um, because they get in the way of hearing God. Um, Psalm says, my ways are not your ways, says the Lord, Lord, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. God's saying, yeah, you might feel that way, but if you want to be in the middle of my river where my love and my power and my blessing and, and my calling are, my ways are not yours and my thoughts aren't yours. So don't say, well, I feel that way. So I'm, God's like, be, be careful with the feelings. Also be careful when you're in a trial, when you're in a trial, many people pray, God, get me out of this. I know this isn't you because I'm not happy right now, God. And many people say, well, I know God wants me to be happy. So I'm going to do this. God doesn't want you to be happy, but he wants you to have joy. And there's a big difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is a smile on your face because of what's happening on the outside. And joy is a smile on your face because of what's happening on the inside. Big, big difference. So when you're in a trial, don't think that God's not allowing the trial and doing something in the trial. Don't pray to just get out of the trial. Pray to get through the trial well. Some people, though, when they're in trials, they have this way of thinking, surely God wants me out of this. And they're in a tough time and they're looking for an exit door. They're looking for an escape route or to just get me out of this. That's not necessarily the will of God. And some people will pull the ripcord and look for an exit, an off-ramp out of a situation. And that's not always the will of God. Be careful about how you respond to your trials. And also the last one is open doors and closed doors. Every open door is not necessarily opened by the Lord. The devil can open doors too. He opens counterfeits all the time. Come this way. Here's an open door for you. Take this off ramp. And we got to be careful that we don't go, hey, it's an open door. God, you know, I'm going to go through that one. It doesn't mean God opened the door. And if the door is closed, so to speak, an avenue, it doesn't mean the door won't be open later. Sometimes we got to wait on the Lord and we continue in faith and then God opens the door. So don't be quick to say a closed door is, forget it, and an open door, I need to run through the first opportunity that opens up. Pray about those things. Run them through these tests. Seek God. Seek his heart. Seek his will. Because he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He says, if you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. I will be found. The father who loves you more than you know. The sovereign creator of the universe who seems to be invisible, yet he still speaks in a still small voice. Yet he still gives us revelation in his word. Puts godly counsel in our lives gives us amazing tools to discern what his will is and what it's not. 
I just want to encourage you to, to, to press on in these areas. If you're seeking anything right now, um, come to the worship night next week. I really believe in a time of meeting with God and praying for one, one another, there's going to be clarity and definition on the will of God. And uh, let, let's ask him to do that. And let's bow our heads and close right now. Almighty God, we love you and we praise you for your word. We praise you for the power of it. This has been a presentation of Valley Metro Church. To hear more messages or to support future podcasts, please visit valleymetrochurch.com.